ahead tonight on Connecticut's news station. Less than two weeks until Christmas and some local nonprofits are scrambling to fill gift requests. We asked the questions tonight. Has the need grown this year or are donations just not as plentiful? And an update on a fire in Middletown. We're hearing what happened in a fire that shut down a road through the city and emotional calls for reform at Connecticut State Prisons. Video recently surfaced appearing to show officers assaulting an inmate and now families of those behind bars are saying enough is enough, but what are their solutions and are lawmakers listening all ahead tonight on Connecticut's news station. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight on donations and why organizations say they still need help with only 12 days left before Christmas. Groups say they're seeing significant shortages in donations this year. Thanks for joining us here on the News at 10. I'm Sarah Sanchez. It's not just here. Nonprofits across the country say they're still in need of gifts. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner joins us in studio and she spoke with local groups who are scrambling to get those needs met before Christmas. DeAndrea. Sarah, now organizers tell me that the number of families that need assistance this year continue to grow. Some that were donating last year are asking for help this year. The clock is ticking. There are only 12 more days till Christmas, but the needs for the treats underneath the tree is still great. We're hearing from others that would normally give. Maybe they're now coming to us looking for assistance. Many Salvation Armies across the state are still in need for toys for children for their Angel Tree program. We're seeing a lot of increases, um, in, particularly in uh, Meriden. We noticed that there's an increase of 400 children uh, as compared to last year that are looking for toys. Meriden has nearly 100 children still on their Angel Tree list. Bridgeport is in a similar situation with 75. Other cities include Ansonia, New London, Stamford, Willamantic, and Torrington. Really what we need is new unwrapped toys brought to those locations in those communities. Pastors of the New Haven Church are doing their part to ensure teenagers wake up to a Christmas gift, but this year has been slow for them as well. But the struggle is real. Even though the economy seems to be getting better, it may be getting better for some people, but there's still people and families that are stuck, that are still making choices to pay their light, to pay gas, or do I buy a Christmas Gift. So that's where the Christmas to Remember gift card drive comes into play. They've been giving out Walmart and Target gift cards to teens for the last six years, a cause that hits close to home for Pastor Brenda Atkins. Christmas in my household for me was sad because being the oldest, I had to always wait for the younger children to get gifts. But she says the day for her to get her gift never came, and it's her mission to change that for teens now. I took that page out of my life to make sure that no child on Christmas go without a Christmas gift. Just letting them know that, you know, hey, you could buy what you want. You don't have to share your gift with your little brother or your little sister. That's this okay. is all for That's you. Right. And it's not just a problem here in Connecticut. Organizations across the country say that Americans have not been donating the same post pandemic. Experts say that it's for a variety of factors, most notably inflation and rising cost of living. Now, if you have the means, though, these organizations do need your help. We have the details on how you can donate on fox61.com. For now in the studio, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, DeAndrea. Man has been charged with manslaughter after a 14-month-old toddler overdosed on fentanyl. This happened over a year ago. Police say they were called to an apartment in Hartford and found a baby unresponsive, not breathing. Daryl Hudley died in, uh, lived in the home, that is. Police say he's a fentanyl user. They're not sure how the baby ingested the drugs, but they did find evidence and packaging in the trash. The baby's mother has been cooperating with police. Hundley has not entered a plea and is expected to be in court early in the new year. We're learning new details about a fire that ripped through a home in Middletown tonight. Fire crews say they were called just before 4.30 to a home on Stantic, Country, uh, Stantic and Country Club Road. The home was up in flames, and because in city water or hydrants are not in that section of town, multiple towns responded to help. 
put the fire out. No one was home. There were no reported injuries. The fire department says the building was seriously damaged. No word yet on a cause. Time for a first check of the forecast. Our dry week continues, but we are tracking more rain. But of mm -hmm. course, it's 2023, Rachel. <laughs> uh, and it is chilly out there. Here's Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. Rachel. Yeah, chilly and getting colder. The cold winds are pumping in that chilly air. We've got the winds out of the northwest and still gusts up around 20, 25 miles per hour. So what we have here is temperatures that are in the 30s. That's the number that you see there on the left side. But wind chills that are in the 20s across much of the state. And I think as we head towards daybreak tomorrow, wind chills could be down down into the teens for some locations. There is a chance for a flurry in spots as we head throughout the next hour or so. We are still seeing a few of those here around Sharon right now over through Kent, but we're expecting most of the state to stay dry. Overnight lows will dip back into the low to mid 20s as we head towards daybreak, at least inland, but mid to upper 20s for the Connecticut shoreline. Here's a look at the wind chill tomorrow. Again, starting off in the teens to right around 20 degrees, heading through the afternoon, rebounding to well, up around 30. This is what it feels like and what you'll need to dress for tomorrow. Actual high temperatures will climb into the mid to upper 30s and at least we'll have plenty of sunshine to go along with those cooler temperatures. And even if they are cooler, certainly nothing extreme for this time of year. It is December and temperatures are going to rebound in a big way starting on Friday. We'll talk about what that means heading closer to the weekend. And yes, we are timing out more rain and wind. Your full forecast coming up, Sarah. Thank you, Rachel. Well, with nights getting colder and chillier, concerns growing that Hartford's unhoused population will not have a place to spend the night. A community discussion was held at the Hartford Public Library Park Street branch tonight. It was hosted by community leaders discussing the issues that face uh, that they say are facing uh, trying to keep homeless people safe during the winter. Different things to different people based on need, and that's what I think we kind of have in common. Well, we see me. We meet that Many were upset with city officials saying they have not done enough to protect the rapidly growing unsheltered population. They say daytime warming centers need to be opened and shelters that have been promised should not be delayed any longer. More than 200 people are believed to be without a home in Hartford. There are significantly less available beds as well. An alleged assault of an inmate all caught on camera. Now advocates and lawmakers are coming together tonight calling for change in our state's prison system. They want to see stronger transparency and oversight. Fox 61's Matt Karen has the story, an emotional story from the Capitol complex in Hartford. Lawmakers and advocates from Stop Solitary CT joined forces today to demand better training for Department of Corrections employees and a call for the appointment of a state ombudsman, someone who can advocate for prisoner welfare from the inside. Fox 61 obtained the video September 25th inside Garner Correctional Institute in Newtown. Officials say inmate Elijah Hamlin refused direct orders to return back to his cell. That's when correctional officers Anthony Marlick, Joshua Johnson, and Patrick McGoldrick got physical. According to their arrest warrants, a state trooper ultimately found the officers used excessive force before utilizing other means of body control reasonable to Hamlin's resistance. You got traumatized people uh, uh, policing or guarding other people that are traumatized. Advocates from Stop Solitary CT stood shoulder to shoulder with state lawmakers Wednesday, including one whose own son was victimized in the system. He had gotten beaten pretty bad. And I'm a legislator, I'm a lawmaker, and this happened to my son. So when I saw the video, it made me start trying to play back in my mind what it looked like when it happened to my son. Advocate Barbara Fair's son has been locked up inside Northern Correctional since age 17. She said the bars broke him. 20 years later, he's still broken. <laughs> For me, it's slow genocide. Because you're killing my son. You're killing all of us who live with him. I can't be silent. I just can't be silent anymore. We have got to stop doing what we're doing to people. 
Both advocates and lawmakers told Fox 61 they don't want to minimize staff assaults, but they do want to tell the whole story and are calling for reform, including more mental health supports, accountability, oversight, and transparency. We have a system that is opaque not only to the public, but it's largely opaque even to people like myself. And if it's opaque to me, we've got a problem because I am the oversight. And perhaps no one knows the system better than someone who used to work inside of it. Keeper Smith Bolden is a former DOC nurse who recalled her onboard training. They were basically made to believe that the men and women who were incarcerated are animals, you know, and to, you know, look at them as such, treat them as such, don't fall for, you know, if they say something's hurting, they're probably lying. As for those three DOC employees, they were put on paid administrative leave, formally charged with assault and pled not guilty. We did reach out to the Department of Corrections for a comment on the incident at the facility in Newtown. As of news time, we have not heard back. Reporting in Hartford, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Now here at 10, dozens of teachers come together in the Elm City and their mission tonight to distribute thousands of books to children of all ages and backgrounds. It's called the Festival of Books, organized by the New Haven Federation of Teachers. Each year, they distribute educational gifts around the holidays. It's about fostering a love of learning and reading and making sure no one feels left out. We want all of our students to be joyful and confident readers. And one way we can do that is make sure that they love books, have access to books, and more importantly, have access to books that look like them, have characters and stories that reflect their, that reflect their lives and their families' lives. Tonight's event also included book read-alouds, crafts, and games. Books were available in both English and Spanish. Organizers say they want multilingual families to be just as included. Early in